they are coordinate systems. Or they are just coordinate systems. Any coordinate system can be used. And we, we are considered the motion of particle in three dimensions. Okay. Uh, look at that. What's the condition to have a DH DT zero? What is the DH DT? DH is, look, this is the function. So is partial derivative of H with respect to DT plus partial derivative of H with respect to Q1 DQ1. Hmm? Partial derivative of this DQ2. Huh? And how many coordinates you have? For example, if you have a three coordinate, we need to stop at that here in Q3 Plus, round the edge, round the P1, DAP1, round the edge, round the plus partial derivative of that. Okay. So, that's nothing, just uh, writing the total derivative of the function, huh? You have a function, so this is a total derivative. So, just make it that the. Divide that by dt, so you will get partial derivative of this with respect to t plus. Can I write this as a sigma? So sigma i one to three. Hmm? Partial derivative of this with respect to qi q dot i hmm? plus partial derivative of this with respect to pi p dot i. Okay. Just I don't want to write three 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 three. Uh, and the thanks to the Hamilton equations, you say thank to the Hamilton equation, Q that is partial derivative of the, yes. oh, 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 sorry, here should be Hamilton. Sure, here should be Hamilton, because we are writing Hamilton equations. Yes. Thanks to the Hamilton equation, instead of the Q dot, you can replace that by partial derivative of H with respect to the partial derivative of h with respect to the pi and you can define that minus partial derivative is with respect to qi no? mm -hmm. and look at that what happened this bracket vanished mm -hmm. so they can it in this bracket partial derivative q p minus partial derivative p q so they will cancel Oh, it's very interesting result and very deep actually. The total change in the Hamiltonian is just given by the partially change of the Hamiltonian when you change only the time. So in the total change of the Hamiltonian, you don't need to know the change in the coordinate or momentum. You need just to know that how much the Hamiltonian is changing versus the time. You see, dH dt. I, I hope you have a, a deep understanding about the difference between the total derivative and partial derivative. No, don't say yes. It's, it's not so easy to understand that. What does it mean actually? So. Because if the system becomes very complicated, like this case, you expected that the total, total uh, derivative should be have the portion from the whole coordinate, but you see that here you have it just the, from the time. So now I back to the, my question: Is it DH, Is it any possibility to have dH dt zero? Yes. If you want to have dH dt zero. If and only if I mean, no, Hamilton should be independent from the time. Explicitly. No, oh, it's very important which word you use. When you are talking about the mathematical physics, it's very important to which word you want to use in theoretical physics. Hamiltonian can be a function of the time. Of course, this Hamiltonian is a function of the time, because Hamilton is a function of q and t, and q and t are a function of the time. But the condition to have the HDAT is that the Hamiltonian should not be a function of the time explicitly. It should be independent from the time explicitly. 
no time in the Hamiltonian. For example, the Hamiltonian for the harmonic oscillator This is the Hamiltonian for harmonic oscillator. You know, this is the this is the, the important and the, the, the only model in the physics which you can use ever. For example, this model can be used to explain the vibration in the lattice huh? mm -hmm. in condensed matter. This model is used in the quantum as a Schrodinger equation, harmonic simple harmonic oscillator. This you can use it in nuclear physics, you can use astrophysics also. In inflation, in cosmology, you have the same like that. In pre-inflationary universe, when the universe started, so the such oscillation, quantum oscillation existed. So this is the, 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 the class of the model you can write in the harmonic oscillator model. Any system near the, if this is the potential of the system, huh? with you, any system near the, any system near the stable near the stable equilibrium point can be written, Hamiltonian can be written in this in the form of that. So if you change it the moment if you move the particle a little bit from that, like delta Q, huh? It will back to the here and the motion will be like harmonic oscillator. But you need to prove that. You need to go and prove that the motion of the test particle near the stable equilibrium point of any given potential leads to the, the Hamiltonian of simple harmonic oscillator. That's it. I don't want to add this to your homework because you have enough questions to solve. So look at that for this system. So explicitly there is no time here. So dH dt and the partial derivative of this, so that's in zero. So you can say that you can find a case of the system where the system have the constant Hamilton. So this is, and you can just divide divide that by this. Yes, yes, and you can plot this, and this is the mean of phase space. Phase space means that draw the graph for the relation between P and Q for the system then you have dH dt0 only for that you can make the plot you can make the phase plot first you needed to check that dH dt is 0 or no if dH dt is 0, zero so you can make the phase plot so phase plot in this case will be for each energy you can do that so you needed to remember that from the geometry, which kind of the equation is this? Q and this is a ellipse, huh? Ellipse. Yeah. For each energy, this is for one energy, for example, E1, this is the first second one, this is the third one, this is the fourth. You have a familiar class of the electric function. I think this information didn't you didn't learn that in the dynamics. You did you delete this phase with space or something? Yes. energy level you have a this so it gives you the range of the possible momentum and the coordinate for the system for each. if you have this energy so it gives it gives you this range of the momentum to you you should not you cannot have the uh, momentum bigger than that so, we can so get it in minus? Uh, yes in yeah you can have it this theoretically you can have this yeah. yes you can have this so let, let me, I want to work on that more, 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 more. For, for a given energy, for a given energy E, 
Can you find for me the area of the, this ellipse? The area is P dQ, huh? Mm -hmm. Integral y dx. So let me to see. For each energy, I need to find the P. So you can see that the P is 2Me, 1 hmm? minus M omega square Q square 2E, dQ. Yes? And that should be the counter, the closed integral over the hole. This closed integral, you can find it in the Arcan if you want to use the complex variable. Mm -hmm. So you can find in the chapter 7 or 8 of the Arcan Weber. The Arcan. There are some other books you can use it that to read the complex variable. Anyway, I don't need to use the complex variable, you know. I will solve this integral by uh, my intuition. This is the area of ellipse, huh? Mm -hmm. So you know from the elementary mathematics that the if this is a if this is an A and this is a B, mm -hmm. so area is P A B, huh? It's pi A. Yeah, pi A. So my equation is P A is like that, huh? B A square plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So look at that. Just the B is identified by the radical. To M E and A is identified to E M omega square. So the area of this integral P dQ is P radical to M E to E M omega square. So listen to the, just let me to see that they the, the cancel. So two P E over omega. For each energy, the area of that is this. If you want to use this phase portrait for quantum mechanics, that was the idea of Bohr and Sommerfeld. So Bohr and the Sommerfeld, early 1990, so it's around before the quantum mechanics proposed actually, before 90, even 1925 or something before that, they suppose that, uh, they propose a theorem. They say that the, the area of phase portrait for any quantum mechanical system or any system like that, even forget about the quantum, should be a discrete set of the numbers. About this constant, there is a discussion. So I, it could be H, it could be, uh, I think it could be H also. Anyway, it can be H or H over P, or P or H. Because H is very tiny number, 10 power minus 32, huh? If you multiply to that, 34. If you multiply that to P or D, so it's not big difference. So I, I just write H here. So this H, uh, Planck constant. This, look at just, just how the mathematics make the everything unified, gather everything together. Huh? Yeah. You are started from the here, from the Hamiltonian, and the, from the, this fact that is it possible to find a system with the constant Hamiltonian? You check it, you find it that yes, if you just have a zero partial derivative, after that you develop the concept of the phase portrait only for this case. And after that, you just by curiosity, you think that what's the area of this? And finally, we, we, we propose the bohr sommerfeld theorem. And you see that what happened here is that if you just use this, this is a principle. Nobody will ask you to prove that. We'll accept that, okay. If it is correct, okay. And look at that what happened. If just do the simple calculations, you will get this. And this is uh, surprising. You know why? Because it gives you the energy level of the quantum harmonic oscillator. Yes, H bar omega constant. We started from basic principle, from phase space. 
you didn't, didn't, you didn't need to store the Schrodinger equation. You know, this comes from the Schrodinger equation. A lot of stuff in it. Just by basic principles, we get that. So, and you can apply that for the another example. So, uh, actually, when I was reading the classical mechanics when I, when I, when I was a student, so I solved this. I was not very uh, happy about that. I was thinking that maybe it's just a, a random case. So I tried that for different potential. So I want to give you one example, and uh, I, I will add this to the homework, definitely I want to do that. You needed to change the potential and find it the energy level for that. Anyway, so back to the phase portrait. So you can get, not only that, you know, you can get a lot of more information, but actually, that works for us is that uh, we need just to have the idea about the first portrait. So we have a bit idea about the first portrait is the, the trajectory, actually two dimension. But if you have more than one coordinate, it will be more dimension. Huh? For example, look at that. It's not possible to make the You know what is that? The Hamiltonian for the a particle, a Lagrangian for the particle in the centrifugal force, huh? Like gravity, like electronics. For well, this case, you have a two coordinates, so Q1 is R and Q2 is theta. So you can define PR. PR is on the uh, uh, this, huh? M R dot. P theta partial derivative of that. So all that will be theta will be. And just just use the the same inspiration of the Hamilton. Hamilton P Q dot minus n is Hamilton. So it will be P R all that huh? P theta theta dot minus Lagrangian. And if you do this, just take a place will be PR squared 2M, P theta squared 2M R squared plus PR. Unfortunately, unfortunately, no. Fortunately, the good point is that the Hamilton is not a function of the time, huh? The function of the time. So dH dt is zero, huh? dH dt, because there is no time here explicitly. So this. So you can build the phase effort, huh? Mm -hmm. Theoretically. But how I can make? Because I have a 2p and I have a 2 uh, coordinate here, r and theta. So actually, I need it, no? I need it. This, is, this picture is completely wrong, just I want to give you, because we cannot make four axes perpendicular to each other. But you need something like that, huh? No? r theta, huh? For example, p r theta. It's impossible to do, to plot that, huh? No? How you can make a lot of four uh, axes in the three-dimensional space? So <laughs> we know that the first portrait here exists, but we are not able to draw that. We are not able to draw the first portrait. We can't draw the first portrait. You know, I use the word portrait. Also, the phase the space is the same. Photo. So, Remain from the Hamilton dynamics. So there are many factors about the Hamilton dynamics. So I don't want to uh, spend much time on the Hamilton dynamics. But uh, that for me it was important to know that when the system can have a conservative energy, or when the total derivative of Hamilton at respect to time can be zero. So I find that the Hamilton should not be explicitly function of the time. So that was the. The, the one which I needed to talk about. So now I want to pass to the 
as the statistical physics. So this information is enough, you know, almost enough for us. I want to back to the statistical physics. I wanted to study the phase portrait for n particle. And each particle is moving in three dimensions. Huh? So phase portrait. There is the space for a system with n, so actually n, I told you, is in the order of n, 10 power 23 particles with 